Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, I have the Long Row Red 11-year-old Cabernet Franc. And hopefully I said that correctly. I'm not French. Cabernet Franc, 11-year-old, 55.9% ABV. I believe that is cast strength from the Long Row, which I'm not going to say Long Row Distillery because it is the Springbank Distillery that makes a heavily peated version of their whiskey referred to as the Long Row. The red is um, finished in a special cask. In this particular case, the Cabernet Franc cask, which I believe is a French oak cask. And that should impart not only a slight, slightly reddish hue, but um, some different flavors, some different fruity flavors into a very smoky whiskey, at least as far as Springbank is concerned. Tell you a little bit about Springbank. It is in Campbelltown, uh, which is a peninsula, I believe it's a peninsula, uh, on the west coast of Scotland, not far from Isla, if you would actually leave the mainland, where this is actually on the mainland, where Isla is an island, if that makes any sense. So the 11-year-old Long Row Red Cabernet Franc. Again, I um, believe it is cast strength at 55.9% ABV. It's a limited edition bottle. It is uncolored and unchill filtered. So checking a lot of boxes as far as what whiskey enthusiasts such as myself really like to see out of a distillery, which is natural color, unchill filtered, high ABV, preferably cast strength. Checking a lot of boxes here for us. Tell you a little bit about this particular vintage. Um, I read that it was matured in ex-bourbon cast for at least nine years. And then for the last two years, it was transferred to the Cabernet Franc with a C on the end um, for the last two years of the maturation. So it's not a mixture of two different whiskeys where, you know, one was bourbon, one was sherry, and they mixed them together. This is actually the same whiskey, nine years in a bourbon cask, and then transferred into a Cabernet Franc barrel for the last finishing or the last two years of the maturation period. So I'm gonna get into you, tell you what I think as far as the smell and the taste, and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so on the nose, a lot of smoke. Not heavily, heavily peated Isla smoke, but probably the next best thing. Actually, that's what I'm calling the art bit of funk these days. Um, left out too long dough that is got a little bit of maritime and a little bit of asphalt in it. Speaking of asphalt, I'm getting a lot of ash on this nose. Not just your regular peat smoke, but, but ash. And then berries. I said berries with a Klein Leash um, signatory that I just did, but man, this is a lovely red and blueberry smell. Maybe strawberry and blueberry. And some nice oak coming in at the end, which there's definitely a difference between oak smoked, or the, let me say it again, is definitely a difference between smoke from peat and the smoky wood smoke that you kind of get. Now, there's peatiness to this without a doubt, but then there's also nice wood smoke, and I pick it up as two, two distinct flavors. Why that's strange to me is usually in an 11 year old whiskey as young as this is, you don't pick up a lot of wood smoke in something this young. So being that I read that um, the Cabernet Franc was actually a French oak cast, which is a little bit more porous than oak from say Spain or America. Um, I feel like I'm picking up, that's the reason why I'm picking up some of that wood smoke is I believe that imparted a little bit of smoky flavor besides the distillery characteristic of the long row. Just my opinion. But again, lovely, lovely blue and red berries with this, along with the ash. And a little bit of oak. So let's take a first sip, see what we think about it. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of water. I'm going to try to pour a little bit more whiskey in to try to even that out slightly. I have got to start using a straw. <clears throat> okay, on the palate. Before when I said it was both smoky and ashy, let me define that a little more clearly on the palate. It is sooty. 
It is fireplace soot. I think I mentioned this before um, in another video, but maybe in a lag of one twelve. But I grew up with a house that had a natural wood burning fireplace, and you know, every once in a while, once a season, I would have to clean it. Um, unfortunately, and after I got it cleaned, it was I refer to it always as a clean ash. There's always like a sootiness smell, especially like where the flu was and the smoke went up. I'm getting a lot of that sooty smell and ash. Which I think may be because it is spring bank. And I think that that doughy, funky smell has kind of intermingled with ash and the, the natural peat from the, the whiskey um, before they distilled it. And it's doughy. It smells like that spring bank funk, which to me is dough left out too long. And asphalt. That's... A lot of the smell, but in a good way. And I know I'm smelling this still, but I'm still talking a little bit about the palate here. I'm still picking up the berries, um, especially on the palate, especially on the linger after you swallow for just a couple of minutes, or probably more like 30 seconds. And then a nice peppery note comes in. So on the palate, sooty, doughy, berries, blueberries, Red berries, probably strawberries. Not quite as tart as a raspberry, if that makes sense to you guys. And with the finish, it's smoky, it's ashy, soot, cracked black pepper. That's my take on it. You know, this is one that, um, if I didn't mention this at the beginning, uh, was given to me by a good friend, Keith. Um, he's at the Malted Man Cave, so go check him out if you guys haven't already. He is a big fan of these Long Row Reds. I am not as versed um, with this distillery being Springbank as he is. I've not had as many as he has had, but still, um, I appreciate the whiskey a lot. And I do, <laughs> I do like when we have these little whiskey tastings. Keith will save me the little bit of the end of the bottle, and what that allows me to do is maybe have one or two little sips before I review the whiskey, as I did with this today. Um, but more importantly, um, I kind of have to shoot from the hip as far as what I think as far as the, the flavors, the smells, the taste, the aromas. And that's because I don't really get a chance to really know this bottle. The majority of the whiskeys I do bring you are bottles I've had many times, or at least that entire bottle. But I do appreciate the challenge of taking a bottle that I don't know very well, having a very limited exposure to it, and trying to bring to you guys what I think it smells and tastes like. Having said that, now that I put water, good amount, and then more whiskey in, let me tell you if it changed anything as far as the smell. <clears throat> okay, so with water, the ashiness um, and the smokiness is definitely taking a step back. I'm definitely getting more of those berry flavors with this. And the oakiness has taken a step back. Now, this was a high ABV to start out with, 55.9. Uh, but it really wasn't terribly aggressive on the palate, um, at least initially without water. But I did get far more of the smoky, ashy, sooty notes before I put water in. Again, those took a step back. Definitely fruitier with the water. And still that nice little bit of oak, that oak from the wood that you just know is from the wood and not something as far as... Um, the peat that was smoked into the barley, you know it's the wood and not the process of distilling the whiskey or drying it, forgive me. All right, have a little sip with water. Still awfully sooty, <laughs> even with a good dollop of water with this one. You get that soot, you get those berries, and then right after it comes that doughy characteristic again. Like, just if you ever made cookies, or if you're, you know, your, your wife, your girlfriend, your mom ever made cookies and you snuck in before she made them and took some of the dough, I get that smell and that taste <laughs> oh, from spring bakes, especially with some of the long rows. Then on the finish again, you get that spicy pepper. Not cinnamon, pepper, maybe a little bit of clove. 
and it's that sooty ash. For someone who likes the smoky whiskeys in general, man, it's a really nice sooty, smoky, ashy flavor mixed with some really distinct berry notes. It's a good one. It's a good one. I don't know exactly what this goes for. I think I saw one of the party source in Bellevue, Kentucky for around, I want to say 140 bucks roughly. I'm probably completely off on the price. I'm terrible at that. My buddy Keith will let me know um, when he paid for it and how badly I uh, butchered what it cost. But, you know, if it's something that you're a fan of, the Red Series, I've had the 12-year um, and a couple of other vintages that uh, uh, was I was fortunate enough to get my hands on. This is probably one of my favorites. Um, just because, again, it has so much smoke, so much ash, cast strength whiskey, and you get a few nice berry notes. So if you guys ever have a chance to get this one, this Long Row Red, Cabernet Franc, 55.9% ABV, I would definitely recommend it. Let me see if there's anything else on the back that I could tell you, which would tell you um, something more particular about this whiskey. 9,000 bottles ever made. They tell you where you, they got that Cabernet Franc from a city in South Africa. So a lot of good information on the back as far as how the whiskey is made. Check it out if you can. <clears throat> as far as the whiskey score, it's a good one. I'm at 89 out of 100 on this particular bottle. Still think it's a very good whiskey, especially for something so young. Springbank does a really good job of that, whether it was with Long Row or their Hazelburn series, where <clears throat> they do young whiskeys that taste much older than what the age statement is. Um, because they do a lot of things right with their distillate. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Until next time, I'll see you in the comments section, and I wish you happy drinking.